Hello everyone. Thanks to everyone for watching this video. My name is Qi Dang. I am an architect and engineer. Today's video is titled Limited Equilibrium Method, and it is going to introduce the arching theory in ideal soils. I am going to give you an overview of what I am covering today's video. First and all, it is a bit of background to the topic, and then focus on the arching effects and the differential planar element. The so-called limited equilibrium has traditionally been used to obtain approximate solutions for the stability problems in soil mechanics. The method can probably best be described as an approximate approach to the construction of a slip line field, and generally entails an assumed failure surface of simple shapes, such as plane, circular, and log spiral. For example, this figure shows a vertical cut rotates around its upper edge. The slip surface with curved shape intersects the horizontal surface of the soil at the right angles. A roughly parabolic distribution of active earth pressure is applied on the yielding cut. In this video, we will introduce the arching effects to determine the nonlinearity of the active earth pressure. Arching, as the word suggests, is a stress redistribution process by which stress is transferred around the region of the soil mass, which then becomes subject to lower stresses. The local yield of the horizontal support of a bed of soil shown in this figure can be produced by gradually lowering a strip-shaped section of the support. Before the strip starts to yield, the vertical pressure per unit of area on the horizontal support is everywhere equal to the depth of the layer of soil times its unit weight. However, a lowering of the strip causes the soil located above the strip to follow. This movement is opposed by frictional resistance along the boundaries between the moving and the stationary mass of soil. In order to investigate the state of stress in the retained soil based on arching theory, let us assume that two parallel rigid vertical cuts retain granular soil, and that the settlement of the retained soil is large enough to fully induce friction between the cuts and the soil. It follows that the weight of any differential planar element in the retained soil is partially supported by the differential resistance at the cuts, and the differential resistance causes changes in the direction of the principal stresses acting on the planar element. As shown in the figure, the major principal stresses on the differential planar element are applied normal to the concave arch, while the minor principal stresses are tangential to the direction of the concave arch, becoming horizontal at the center of the element. Now we cut the half of the planar element and see the directions of the major and minor principal stresses on the differential planar element are changed owing to the frictional resistance at the cut. The minor principal stresses, sigma 3, on the differential planar element behind the cut act along the concave arch shown in the figure. Whereas the major principal stresses, sigma 1, are perpendicular to the concave arch, the shape of the concave arch is assumed as an arc of a circle. The width of the differential planar element at the depth z is b. The active lateral stress on the cut, sigma h, can be calculated by considering the horizontal force equilibrium in the triangular element at the left edge of the concave arch. The lateral stress on the cut is given by this equation, where theta is the angle of the minor principal plane with respect to the horizontal at the cut. Similarly, the lateral stress at point E of the concave arch, which was originally located at point D, is given by this equation, where psi is the angle between the tangent to the arch at point E and the vertical. Dividing this equation by sigma 1 and substituting sigma 3 over sigma 1 equal to 1 over n for the soil in the active condition, then we obtain this equation where n is the ratio of major to minor principal stresses. As sigma 1 plus sigma 3 equal to sigma v plus sigma mh, substitution for sigma mh gives this equation. Therefore, 
the vertical and the lateral stresses acting at arbitrary points along a differential planar element in the soil can be calculated from the two equations. The value of theta is a function of phi, as we discuss next. The rotation angle theta of the principal stresses for the cut with cut friction angle of phi can be obtained using the Mohr circle, as shown in this figure. According to the sine rule, we can write this equation. Then rearranging this equation, we obtain the new expression. If we remember the previous sigma h equation, then dividing this by sigma 3. So we can combine the two equations and obtain the second order equation. Solve this equation for theta gives this expression. When we have the two values of theta, the largest of the two values corresponds to the active action of the cut. We shall now derive a new relationship for k that reflects the variation of sigma v with phi. The differential vertical force dv on the shaded element at point d can be expressed as this equation, where dA is the width of the shaded element at point d. The average vertical stress sigma v bar across the differential planar element, shown in this figure, can be obtained by dividing the total vertical force v acting on the differential element by the width of the element b. Integration of this equation we obtain the new expression. Dividing equation sigma mh by equation sigma v bar gives a new ratio k of the active lateral stress at the cut to the average vertical stress over the differential planar element. Now we know the active lateral stress ratio. Next, we will derive equations for the Earth's pressures. This figure shows the stresses acting on the differential planar element between two cuts. As mentioned previously, the major and minor principal stresses at the right edge of the half differential planar element must be applied in the vertical and horizontal directions respectively. At the left edge of the differential planar element, there is a non-zero shear stress along the cut, sigma h times tangent phi. The rectangular differential planar element with signals dz is subject to the average vertical stress sigma v bar, the shear stress sigma h times tangent phi on its interface with the cut, and the self-weight gamma of the element. Summation of all vertical forces acting on the differential planar element gives this equation. After simplification, the equation becomes this expression. The average vertical stress at any depth may be obtained by applying the boundary condition sigma v bar equal to q at z equal to zero. Then we can solve the ordinary differential equation with general solution. The active lateral stress at any depth acting on the cut can be calculated by multiplying the equation sigma v bar by k, which is given by this equation. Now we will make an example. Here, we assume the uniform pressure Q is zero, and the internal friction of soil is 30 degree. So, the vertical stress sigma V bar and the lateral stress sigma H are shown here. In this case, we use the Rankine's Earth pressure to compare the current theory. In Rankine's theory, the vertical stress sigma V is gamma times Z. The active lateral pressure sigma AH is Ka times sigma V where Ka is expressed here. From the two figures, the ranking stress distributions are linearity. In contrast, the stress distribution of the current theory is non-linearity. When the depth z is increased as very deep, the stresses of the current theory converge fixed magnitudes. For z equal to infinity, we obtain the new stress equations. The vertical stress sigma v bar is equal to gamma times b over k over tangent phi. The lateral stress sigma h is equal to gamma times b over tangent phi. From conclusions what we learned, the arching phenomenon is known to engineers as the reduction of stresses experienced by using underground structure. The limit equilibrium is the common approach to obtain approximate solutions for the stability problems in soil mechanics. Okay, thanks to everyone for watching my video today, 
and I do hope you found the video informative and that you learned some things from it. If you do have any questions, then you can write comments and messages. I am happy to answer any questions. Thanks for your watching.